Hey guys, what's up? Caleb Downing here, and today we're going to go over my version of the Jailbroke Space Invader. Let's get into it. Alright, so our Jailbroke series. I really have really enjoyed this series. I hope you guys have too. Um, I think it's super fun. And for, for the Jailbroke thing, what, what we're talking about, if you're new to this and you haven't really been following along, um, is we take a, 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 a firearm that we really like. It's usually cost prohibitive. We did the Sugar Weasel. And then we did the SIG Rattler, right? We take the idea of that and we make our own version. So our version at home, as it were. And we try to cut corners where we need to cut corners to try to make it just still, it scratches the itch, but it's less cost prohibitive. And this particular build, I think we, I think it came out the best. Number one, it came out the best. I think it functions and works the best. It's more fun. It's nine millimeters, so it's way cheaper shooting 300 blackout stuff that we've built before. And as far as bringing that cost down, we are at a conservative third of the cost of an actual Space Invader. An actual Space Invader, last I looked up, the MSRP was about 3,100 bucks. Pretty expensive. This guy, after piecing and parting everything together, minus the accessories, it's like 812 bucks. So like I said, a conservative third of the price of is that a third? That's almost a quarter, right? If my math is right, that's almost a quarter of the price of the actual Space Invader. So I think we really hit the nail on the head on this one. I think I did for me personally. And when you build guns for yourself, you're building them for yourself. And who cares what other people think? So for me personally, I think we really did really did well on this. All right, so let's jump into the pieces and parts of this. Uh, the core of this build is the receiver set, right? And it's not really a receiver set because they're not made by the same company. The upper receiver, that's an Aero Precision. They're pistol caliber carbine upper receiver. One thing we had to do with that is on the inside of these receivers, they have a little doohickey that works with, with uh, Glock magazines for that last round bolt hold open. Since we're not using Glock magazines and it wouldn't work with Colt stick mags, we took that little piece out. So that's the only real modification we had to do with that one. Um, we took that guy out so it didn't you know jam up the gun or anything. The lower receiver, this is a Spikes Tactical ST9 lower receiver and again it uses those Colt stick mags which gives that gives that look and one big reason I went with this versus some of the other uh, magazines or not magazines the other lower receivers out there is because it has this cutout is this is specifically made for Colt stick mags this is not like a forged upper or forged lower that somebody got and then just milled out you know the internals to fit the Colt stick mags and you still have that extra material out here on the front. This is specifically made for Colt stick mags, which again, it, for aesthetics and looking like what it needs to look like, I think it did the best. Um, and for price wise, it's really good price. Um, I think that piece we did get at aim surplus, really, really good price. The insides, this is a standard mil spec lower receiver parts kit uh, from Anderson Manufacturing. I really like those lower parts kits. Uh, I've bought several of them on pretty much most of my nine millimeter PCCs. I use them not just for the for the mil spec pins and springs and detents because in my opinion, if it's mil spec and they work, they work. I really don't care who makes them as long as they work. But the trigger and specifically the hammer are slightly different. Uh, the hammer specifically, it doesn't have that big spur that comes out the back. And for nine millimeters, nine millimeter direct blowbacks, for me, I generally, if I if I have a standard hammer, I get trigger slap, right? Because those bolts, especially when you go to suppress these things, those bolts travel a lot faster. And when it travels faster rearward, it really slams and hits that hammer. The hammer comes down a little excessive in speed and hits the trigger and pops the trigger forward and slaps your finger and is very uncomfortable, very annoying, and it can kind of ruin your shooting day. It just it's just it's just like having a mosquito bite on your finger. It just drives you stinking nuts, right? But these hammers and the trigger, but specifically the hammers that come in these Anderson kits, they're spurless. So there is no spur on the back. It makes it it basically eliminates that trigger slap. So I really, really like that. The bolt, since we're talking about bolts as well, and the internals, the bolt, I can't remember exactly which brand and model this is. It's the cheapest one that I could find, and he runs. He works and he does exactly what he needs to do. Nothing special about it, no tuning, no craziness, and there's no mil spec nine millimeter bolts, uh, but the cheapest run of the mill bolt that I could find. The charging handle, this is a Break Arms Warhammer charging handle. Uh, we got this guy, I believe we got it from Aim Surplus. 
Uh, for what they are, they are priced extremely competitive uh, for being an ambi charging handle that has gas busting capabilities. I like it. Um, I've worked with them before, so maybe I'm biased, but I have bought my own charging handles. They've given me some because I've worked with them, uh, but I've bought my own. So yeah, I put my money where my mouth is on that one and they work. We talked about, I think before, I've shot this video like five times, so maybe I've said it before, maybe I haven't, but this Q shorty stock, we got this used off of the air15.com equipment ex exchange, one of the best places in my opinion to get used pieces and parts. Uh, the people on there are vetted, right? So you can rate them. If somebody scams somebody, then that scammer is going to get flagged and nobody's going to buy from them. So they're going to do it once, but then they're going to get flagged. Unless you're an idiot and you don't look up their ratings, they're going to just not be able to make money on there because they got flagged and nobody's going to buy from them. The guy that had this before me, one reason I got it at a significant savings is he had it extended like this and he went to mortar his firearm to go clear a malfunction. And what you're supposed to do is collapse the stock, even not just on these systems, but on regular AR-15s. You need to collapse the stock because you can break stuff. And he kind of did. He didn't really break it, but he bent the, the pad on the back. He bent it in a little bit. It bent. And so all I did was stick it in a vise and bent it back out and it works perfectly fine. So I don't know why he didn't do that, but he didn't want to take the time to do that. So he bought a new stock and I benefited because I got this at an extreme discount. So I'm very happy with that. Um, the internals of the buffer assembly, it has the buffer or the spring that comes with this, uh, but the buffer, that is an AR-10 buffer. It's an extra heavy buffer. And if you get an AR-10, this is not standard across the board, but it works generally most of the time for nine millimeters. If you need an extra heavy buffer, buffer for your blowback nines you can i've had good luck with it get some um, ar-10 carbine buffers right they're heavy and they're not expensive and they work right so i've had good luck with that so that's what's in here and it it's smooth let's get the mag out of there it's smooth this guy is not super uh not barky but kicky right he doesn't kick a whole lot um, is it's pretty dang smooth, especially for a direct rollback nine millimeter PCC. The barrel, again, that's a uh, Bear Creek Arsenal, I believe is what it was. Just as cheap of a nine millimeter barrel because I'm not shooting matches with this, even though it would be a good gun for that, I think. Um, and I'm not trying to shoot bullseyes. This is just a fun gun. I didn't care if I got some super high quality. I mean, you could spend a lot of money on it, but it's a cheap Bear Creek Arsenal barrel. He does exactly what he needs to do. Um, the end up here, we got from Aim Surplus a tri -lug adapter. They make some really cool ones now that are a tri-lug and it has uh, half a 28 threads on the end, kind of like a regular MP5 would have. That's really cool. I didn't see those at the time and I'm going for cheap and I'm really never gonna you know, thread on a suppressor. I'm gonna use the tri-lug, um, but you could do that if you wanted to. They make some other different versions, but this is what we got on the end of here. The hand guard, pretty much the last real, you know, sticks and bones of this thing. This is a matrix arms handguard and this is where i searched high and low to try to find a budget priced handguard that had m locks on the sides and then picatinny on the top and bottom i could not for the life of me find one that that scratched that itch that had that look and i wasn't i, I was kind of close to trying to find a noveski um handguard and that would really sneak this guy in and make it look a lot better but again, going for the price, I just went with this guy um, and I got a 1913, a Picatinny um, slot that goes on the bottom. And I just basically locked tight of that guy in there, tightened him down and he's semi permanently attached down there, all right? The whole thing, we Cerakoted it uh, sniper gray. Again, just to kind of go along with the look of what I was trying to go for. Could have gone with some different couple colors, uh, but I'm a sucker for that for that sniper gray. I like it. I think it just I think it works really well. Um, other than that, that that that's the gun itself. That's the gun itself. Those are the major pieces and parts. To finish everything else out, we did get a. I've had this Holosun for a while. This is a Holosun 403B, not the solar version. I kind of like the non-solar versions. I understand why people have them. I have some of them. I, I like them. Um, but the non-solar version, just they seem less finicky. Sometimes those solar versions, they try to pick up on stuff, uh, you know, the, the light, and it just, it just, it dims and stuff when it's not supposed to. I know you can turn that feature off, but sometimes for whatever reason, the feature just pops back on on some of those. And so you'll go to pick up the gun and you're like, I don't have a dot. Oh wait, I do, but it's super small and tiny. Whereas these guys are pretty dummy proof in my opinion, in my experience, and it's just easier to work with them. 
This riser is not an actual Unity riser. Those are relatively expensive, and again, trying to go budget, this is an Airsoft knockoff version, so sorry guys, but I bought the knockoff version, it's like 30 bucks or something like that. And the quality is not there. Quality is definitely not there. This has a front sight post that is missing because it worked itself out and it fell out. That's not a good thing. Um, but it's supposed to have um, a, a rear and a front sight. If everything works right, you have a backup you know, iron sight system built into this, but obviously it's not working. And this is not a defensive firearm or whatever. This is a fun gun, so I really don't care. But I really do like these higher skyscrape style um, risers, because for me personally, I've really come to just appreciate not having to bend my neck down. If you're wearing other stuff, not so much tactical cool guy gear, but big fluffy coats when you're out shooting, it's nice to not have to try to scrunch everything down and get your head down in here to look through those lower mounts. Those higher mounts really work very well for that. Um, again, going budget, I didn't want to spend a bunch of money, and I already had it, so I used the uh, Streamlight this is the rail mount one, I believe it is, uh, the smaller-ish version, and he works. He works well for him. He's worked over the years just perfectly fine. Not the brightest light, uh, but for my needs and my purposes, he works perfectly fine. A BCM grip, since this is an SBR, I could have gone with a you know 90 degree grip. I really don't care. I like the slight angle to it. It fits my hands perfectly fine. It works really well. Um, and then I run a bunch of different suppressors. If, you've, if you're around here on the channel, you know we run suppressors. We do a bunch of stuff like that. We test stuff. I've used this as a test bed a lot of times on suppressors, specifically nine millimeter stuff. Um, and I really like it. I really, I really like this as a test bed for that because he cycles well. He's not excessively gassy, uh, but he will show if it can has a lot more back pressure because you know everything's sealed up pretty well. Um, and so you'll be able to see if he's got excess gas or not excess gas. Uh, but right now up here we have a Silencer Co. Omega 9K, which really, in my opinion, fits this guy very well as being just an overall, just a medium sized gun. You can get shorter, teeny tiny little guys, but a medium sized, just almost like a bulldog. I don't know like a slimline bulldog. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but this guy just, he he's extremely reliable, he's accurate, and he's super fun. So anyway guys, that is my take on the Space Invader. Not a Noveski, but the Noveski that we have at home, as it were, but the jailbroke version of that firearm. I really like it. I think we knocked it out of the park as far as scratching the itch and really bringing that price point down. The price that we saved on not getting the actual Noveski, we could have got an actual, you know, Unity riser and maybe, you know, a nicer optic or something if we wanted to and the suppressor and a light and some ammo. You save a lot of money if you build your stuff at home, right? The quality may not be there, but for me, half of the fun is building it and putting together, working through the problems of tuning it, and then, you know, then you got something that works. Hopefully you have something that works. Sometimes you don't. I've had projects that just miserably fail. This guy didn't. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop rambling. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think. Is it is it worth it taking the time to research prices, buy pieces that are slightly damaged, fixing them yourselves, you know, to bring price points down? Is that worth it? That gunsmithing, that garage gunsmithing kind of thing, is that worth it? Or would you rather just go out and spend the $3,000 and get a Noveski and know it's going to work? And if it doesn't work, you can send it back to Noveski and they'll fix it. Whereas you build it yourself, then you fix it yourself. Is it worth it? Or is it just, is it not worth messing with? I'd like to know that from you guys. I would. Really would. Um, that's pretty much it. Y'all be good. Be safe. Appreciate you guys watching, subscribing, and everything. And hopefully, we'll catch you guys in the next video. See you.